Hi, this is George Cow, and welcome back to the series of interviews where I am talking with life coaches who have been able to create a successful life coaching business. This is not an easy thing, as I've said before. Um, in the coaching world, it's well, those of you who don't know much about the coaching world, uh, it is much easier to build the kind of business that I'm building. It's business coaching, marketing coaching, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to actually working on personal development with other people and making an earn, earning a living from it, it is not as easy it may, as it may be sold to you as. But I have been able to find some life coaches who are actually making a living doing this, and they have been generous enough to be willing to share um, what are the tips and secrets that allowed them to build a business. So I am so grateful to be talking with Tracy James today. Uh, she has an amazing story, so I'll let her share her story as she goes. Um, she's a world traveler as well, and she'll tell you a bit about that. Tracy, thank you so much for willing, being willing to join me today. Absolutely, George. Yeah. Glad to be, so, be here, be in the so conversation. Great. Yeah, and speaking of traveling, you are... You've just I'm in traveled. Sausalito. I'm yes. just in the Bay Area. I'm in your your neck of the woods. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just got here yesterday, and I'm exploring. So I, I figured I would talk to you from the car because this is usually this is my office. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. It works. So this is kind of like a little snapshot of my life. Yeah. Uh, my clients are always like, "Where are you today?" Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. It's pretty so, much part of the part of the process. So the first question I always like to ask just to get people um, oriented with your work is what do clients seek you out for? And I know that's a strange way to phrase it, but you might say what you do with them or maybe, maybe the question is, you know, I'm sure you do, you do lots of things with them that they might not have known to seek you out for. So maybe those, those yeah. are two questions, right? So what first question is what do they initially seek you out for? And then if you'd like to say more about what you end up also doing with them, that'd be great. Okay, cool. Yeah, <clears throat> initially people seek me out. People are referred to me, really. Mm. So that's how I, how I connect with most of my clients is somebody else who knows what I do yeah. tells them that they need to talk to me. That's and usually they, those people know when they find, you know, someone they care about or someone who, you know, if it's a practitioner or they have a client um, who really needs to get from their head to their heart mm. and who's struggling in some way, um, often they are very um, successful in certain areas of their lives, like innovators, um, visionaries, uh, but they, they're like so in their head with it. <laughs> they mm -hmm. like are kind of disconnected with their bodies and they're actually experiencing in their real lives some issues, you know, in terms of um, maybe relationship problems, you know, their marriage is falling apart. Maybe they, maybe they started to drink or started mm -hmm. to get into some kind of addictive pattern where their life is starting to not completely spiral out of control, but it's just like some, they need, they need some kind of intervention. Mm. And um, I'm really good at that, to get in there and help someone figure out what is going on, where are they um, mm. disconnecting from yeah. themselves and yeah. how to get back in there and then, um, and then how to apply their whole selves, like more of who they are to their life. So their life feels satisfying because mm. if this stuff is starting to happen, you know, if you're starting to use substances or something, there's something missing, you know, you're feeling like you can't be yourself all the way. Mm. So, um, so that's the work that we do. And, and my work is, is, is long-term like, and I've just come to accept that. <laughs> like mm. I don't try to do sure. these like six week package or anything like that. Like that's not what I do. People who come to work with me know that it's, it's a process. It's a relationship. It takes time. It's about their own personal evolution mm -hmm. and, um, and you know, that they need to commit to that. And, and when they do, it's, it's awesome. You know, they get a lot from it. Um, but it's, it's deep. It's, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I could, I'm just going yeah, on and on, but totally. I, no, I, I love what I do and the people that come to me love what I do, but I think it's, it's been a challenge for me, I think, to really effectively communicate that in a simple way 
Mm-hmm. So I've basically structured my way of marketing myself through relationship and through referral because totally. yeah, it's just a lot easier for me like that. Yeah. I, I actually believe that um, the holy grail of marketing is word of mouth. Uh, and it's, I, I'm not the only one to say this. I mean, it's, it's known by marketers that if you can get word of mouth marketing, that means your products and services are working. Because yeah. that means people are talking about it. And I think a lot of, um, well, I'll, I'll just say, I mean, we're talking with life, t- talking with and about life coaches here. A lot of life coaches, uh, maybe they're not getting the word of mouth because they haven't yet honed in on their, their genius. They haven't yet honed yeah. in on sort of the work that they alone are so good at doing. Maybe they take some of that for granted or they haven't yet been willing to focus on a certain area. And so it, the work hasn't taken off in a way where, people are, are just, wow, you know, the results are great or the presence is amazing and therefore yeah. they're, they're happy to talk about it. So it's really great that you are, that people are coming to you through referrals. So, yeah. so um, I, I have I, found a way yeah. kind of just to give you a mm-hmm. sense of from when I started, like mm-hmm. how did I start that? Because, yes, you right, know, I right, think right. for people, um, yeah. before I actually, you know, was delivering the goods um, I had to I still had to do it through through people because that was pretty much that's my way so yeah. so basically what I did um, starting out was um, I reached out to some people that I knew um, the main one was a friend of mine actually my best friend's husband he owns the owned this business that was um, for to train real estate investors. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, um, basically, so he had all these people that were coming every week for real estate investing courses and stuff mm. like that. And I thought, well, I mean, these people need coaching. Mm-hmm. And so, and I hadn't at that time really totally refined my niche and I really mm-hmm. didn't know exactly what I was doing. And I was starting to get into spirituality, but then, you know, this was like, um, yeah, like 2000. So it was like 15 years ago, basically. Mm. Um, and so I approached him and I said, look, you know, what if I offer um, three sessions? I mean, I was, you know, I know a lot of people like don't like to give their stuff away. And, you know, I think that's great. I was just like all in, you know, I'm just like, I, I knew I needed to get really good at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I had been doing psychotherapy before I transitioned to coaching. So I, I did have a sense of my ability, but coaching is different. And I, mm. I just wanted to get really good. So I just said to him, look, I'll, why don't you include in your package to these people, mm. three individual coaching sessions with me. Brilliant. And then if they want to stay on, you know, they can just pay me, but then, you know, but they get this kind of value add from you. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so that's what I did. And that was really how I started my business was like, I had all these, I was coaching all these real estate investors wow. and they were great. Cause they're, they're also, you know, they're really creative and, you know, I actually resonated with them, you know, more entrepreneurial and stuff like that, which works for me, um, in my interests in terms of coaching and, Um, so, you know, so I, I, I always talk to new coaches about that because Mm. I think that, you know, there's probably somebody in their community and now, you know, I have a lot of other referral relationships, you know, through my friends basically who happen to be practitioners, but also just people that I've introduced myself to. Mm -hmm. I mean, really like I could go through, look through my entire career and it's all that it's all Mm -hmm. meeting people. Um, you know, one of my best friends, a chiropractor, Mm -hmm. well, you know, we, she knows what I do. And so she just refers me people that come to her office that she knows, you know what, you really got to go deeper into your mm-hmm. body and your emotions. Mm-hmm. Go talk to Tracy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cool thing is she does actually like muscle testing. So she like yeah. tests their body if I'm good for them oh, and cool. they'll say yes or no. You know, it's like, yeah, oh, she's wow. great. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, but like, so that, you know, so, so there are people like in your community who are doing, you, know, you just want to look for who's doing work with the kind of people you'd like to work with, like mm-hmm. who's already connected with those people mm-hmm. and then approach them. You know, maybe yeah. you could say, look, Hey, chiropractor, you know, I want to offer two sessions to your patients. Um, you know, I could, you know, help them, you know, chiropractors love when you 
say, you know, you, you want to help people um, keep their, you know, their, 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 their treatment goals, yeah. you know, like maybe yeah. they're supposed to be eating better. They're supposed to be doing something. Mm. And um, so you, you say, look, I want to help support you mm. and your clients and keeping, you know, up with their treatment goals and really being successful at this. Mm -hmm. And that's just like a win-win for everybody. Yeah. And you know, who, who wants to say no to that? Like, it's really not, it's yeah. an easy yes, you know? So yeah. it's pretty much like anybody you could approach who's already working with people, just say, Hey, like I'm just put it out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I mean, and, and some people have an issue, like they don't want to give away their services. I, I just, I did. I gave it away. Mm -hmm. I just, I worked my ass off. I just, mm -hmm. excuse me if I'm swearing. No, no, no absolutely. <laughs> it deserves <laughs> um, But like, you know, that, I just built it like that, you know, and, um, and then people came to know what I do. And then, yeah. and then as I got more experience, then I started to be able to say, oh, wait, I don't like to work with this kind of person um, or this other kind of person. Oh yeah, this is more what I like to do. Um, and then I, um, yeah. And then I ended up, um, making some more relationships. Like I, I actually went to an ICF meeting. Um, mm -hmm. I was on the board of the yeah. international coach federation in Los Angeles. Oh. And I was at one of the meetings, which, you know, being on the board is great. I think you, you know, you meet a lot of people and I think that's really good as a coach mm -hmm. to engage in the community of coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, at ICF meetings, I met a guy who, um, he owned a, like a, an anger management, mm. like business, basically. Yeah. He would, he would like teach anger management classes. Well, in my therapeutic experience in the past, I had like lots of experience in that kind of work. Mm. And, um, and this was a time actually I had just moved out to Los Angeles. So it was like, I was like building my business all over again in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I met this guy and he's like, oh, I do anger management. Do you, do you teach anger management? Which is kind of like coaching, but it's just, you know, yeah. you know, but, it, yeah. but I knew how to do it. So then I was like, heck yeah. So I went and I started like doing his courses, like, you know, just doing groups. And um, he let me do it my own way and it was awesome. So then I started to get some clients that way because they were like, wanted kind of, further coaching and how to manage their emotions and stuff like that. So that yeah. was great. I still have, <laughs> that was like seven years ago. And there's one client I still have from that. It's awesome. um, yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. Now she's like, I mean, it's like, it's, it's crazy to see, you know, just how much people can transform where they're like in court. Right. Cause a lot of people there were like mandated by the court to go. Oh, okay. intense. Yep. And, um, so anyway, but, uh, so that, that was one that I, but, but, but then also that same person was, um, invited to go on this television show, this kind of reality show where they were looking for like anger management, somebody to deal with this, like yeah, these yeah. intense couples. Yes. And so he called me, he was like, I don't want to do this. Do you want to do it? So I was like, okay. So I ended up being on this television show awesome. from having made this connection, yeah. you know, at an ICF meeting. Right. And then also I had made uh, a connection there with another woman who was a coach who actually had like an overflowing practice. Like she had too many wow. clients. And so she was looking for somebody to refer people to, but, but particularly the experience that I had, because I also had a lot of like substance abuse treatment experience. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I could bridge that into coaching. So basically she hooked me up with this high end, um, treatment center in Malibu that was like a hundred thousand dollar a month place. Holy moly. Yeah. And they were like referring me clients like that for, for aftercare, you know, it was awesome. I still have like um, the, the large bulk of my practice still is, is those clients. Cause wow. we just bought, it was like perfect for me. I work really well with people in recovery. Yeah. Um, who want to go deep, want to figure out why the heck they mm. blasted their life into bits and yeah, yeah. you know, how, how to really create a life now, you know, that, mm. that, that where they thrive and they're really authentic. And so, you know, so that's kind of, you know, so every, every, every step of the way, like it was always about connecting with people. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank yeah. you so much. I mean, this, you pretty much answered all, all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. 
So I know. All right. Goodbye. I'm off to Sausalito. All right. <laughs> no. So I have so many questions for you here. So uh, thank you for sharing how you got started because a lot of people are wondering, okay, gosh, you know, actually you are, you and the others I've interviewed so far are, you, you know, typically 10 years plus in their career. And so it's often difficult to remember back to how we got started, you know? Yeah. And so, and so I love that you said, you know, you, you got a connected, you had, you had a, you had a friend who uh, was serving some people and why, why don't you, you know, and you said, well, why don't you include some of my three free sessions for whoever wants to take, 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 take uh, you up on that. I love that because I, it's, it's actually kind of an aha moment for me because I've been telling people, Hey, go connect with influencers, offer them two or three free sessions so they can get to know your work and, you know, maybe give you feedback or refer you, but you're yeah. saying plug yourself in directly as a bonus yeah. you know, and your free services. Cause usually, you know, we talk about, okay, a, a, a include some kind of info product or some kind of digital download as a bonus, but you're yeah. including your, your sessions as a bonus, which is brilliant. And yeah. I mean, I feel like everyone watching this, listening to this should go in and, and do that. So let me ask you this then. Um, yeah. This story that you've told, as well as the, the, the connection with the, the um, anger management consultant uh, and, you know, the, the treatment center, relationships. Yeah. There's something about how you approach relationships that allows those win-win-wins to come, come, come about. Yeah. Do you have any insight, any tips for, for all of us to, to be able to do that more successfully? Because yeah, people, I mean... You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there are people you meet who are, I don't know, maybe they, they feel desperate or, or they, they seem yeah. needy or, or they seem like they're just all about how can you help me, which turns, yeah. turns people off, right? But you have a way yeah. of doing things that allows people to say, ah, let me think of Tracy when, you know, mm -hmm. when, for this opportunity. So yeah, uh, any, any tips? Yeah, I do. I mean, because honestly, I see a lot, you know, there's these coaching training programs out there now and um, where it's like, you're always like trying to meet people and trying to get them into conversations right. exactly. to enroll, enrollment conversations, they call them. One of my yeah. clients was telling me about this. She was in this training program. Yeah. And I'm kind of like... So, and it's almost this feeling like you meet somebody and it's like, they're trying to get you to do something already, yes. <clears throat> you know, like there's like this agenda. Right. And I'm really not about that. I'm really not about that. Like, I feel like I want to genuinely connect with people like deep as human beings, like let's be friends. Like anybody, I actually had this advice. I had a coach, hmm. um, business coach quite a few years back. And she just said, you know, why would you want anybody in your world that wasn't somebody you'd want to have as a friend? You know what I mean? Like somebody, like just approach people who you, who, who are awesome, you know, yeah. like why deal with, you know, people that are jerks or something or right. snotty, you know, whatever. Just yeah, like totally. you can meet like a hundred people and there's going to be like three of them that are just awesome, you know? Yeah. And so just yeah. like weed your way through the hundred. Don't try to like, make some kind of connection or have some right. kind of agenda when there's I no energy that. with the people. Yes. But you know, you're going to meet some people. It's like, Oh my God, we totally click. Like, let's talk about stuff. What are you doing? And, and then you just, you just kind of feel a kindredness mm. and out of that kindredness is normally like a genuine desire for mutual benefit. You know, mm. not like, um, like I just talked to a woman today, like who I had, I had done, um, uh, a workshop in New York city mm -hmm. at her she has this like wellness center mm -hmm. but i didn't actually meet her mm -hmm. so <clears throat> we kind of scheduled to talk and we just totally clicked like it was like we were like soul sisters you know we're like oh my gosh like oh it so relates to what you're talking about and then you know by the end of the call it's like well you know what if there's anything i can ever do to kind of make your life better or just help out with anything i'm really a big fan of what you're up to you know and she was saying that to me and she's like you know if you want ever want to come back and do things here, you know, you're always welcome. If you want me to market some of your kind of wow. online programs, like, yeah. you know, and just like, she's thinking in her mind about how to help me. And I'm yeah. thinking about how to help her. And like, right. that's the whole thing, you know, and I do not deal with people where it's like, ew, like oogie weird energy, you know, yeah. or they're kind of like have walls up or, or I feel like I have to like try too hard. Just right. let it go. Like, just keep going, keep moving. Yeah keep connecting. And then there's going to be people where there's life and people who like genuinely 
want the best for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and those are the people, you know? And so that, you know, I'm just, I guess I just like hold out for those people. And then when I connect with them, we start creating stuff together. Cause I think it's kind of natural to, you know, I've done a lot in partnership, you know, Mm -hmm. like I, I love partnership and collaboration Mm -hmm. and, Mm. Um, so, you know, I would just say that to people like, do not waste your time. Like just keep mm. on walking. If somebody's like snotty or even if they seem really like, oh, they've accomplished so much. Like you're like kissing their ass, you know, yeah. for what, you know, yeah. just like yeah. forget about it. Just keep right. going and just find that, you know, find the energy, find the aliveness. Yes. And then it's just, you know, mm. it's just happens. And, and I don't mean, you know, I had a lot of, I mean, yeah, I've been doing this the coaching business for like 15 years. And I will say that it took me, it wasn't until, you know, I was like half, I I didn't full on, you know, I had like other things I was doing in the Mm -hmm. beginning. Like I was Mm -hmm. still doing therapy, um, you know, and I was like transitioning out and then I kind of had other little things I would do, you know, like I I had to, to kind of bridge into having like a full, full on coaching practice. Mm. Um, and so I think, you know, it's okay for people. Like sometimes people are just like, they just are so tired of what they're doing. They want to go full on and that I get that, you know, and, and I definitely hit a point where, you know, I have, I have had those points where it's like, wow, (laughs) I'm going all in here and I don't really have a whole lot that I'm making yet, but I'm just going to do it. And, you know, it's not easy. And, um, but you know, it's up to you if you want to do that. It was definitely worth it for me in those moments Mm -hmm. when I did. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, you know, the main thing is just like, just stay true, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, like I think there, if you're noticing yourself getting to a place where you're feeling kind of desperate or, you know, you're coming off as like, as that with people, then like, pull back a little bit and just find something that'll like supplement you so that you can have enough of a feeling of like abundance to show up in a space where you're, you're coming from overflow. You know, you're coming from like, what can I offer instead of like, what can I, who, you know, you're in a networking meeting and like, what can these people do for me? You know, that's a really sucky place. Cause I think it's more, you know, that saying, you know, be a, a go giver, you know, instead of like a go getter, you know, just like give, like just give it, you know, like you want, you know, people there, they have questions. What's going on for you? Like what's, what's in the way right now, you know, and not like, you know, just kind of have a conversation that's helping them not even trying to get them as a client, just as a human being, you know? (laughs) So, so that I think people, I, I, I know it because they give me that feedback a lot. Like people just know, like I'm somebody that, like I'm all in, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm here unless you're a jerk and then I'm not, but like, you know, but when, when people are really like present and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to help and support. And so I think coming from that place and, and, and then there's like a spiritual side to it mm-hmm. um, that I haven't really mentioned, but you know, yeah. I think in the time, you know, one piece of that is the, the vibration, you know, like your, your vibe. And, um, you know, I love Esther Hicks, the work Mm -hmm. of Abraham. Yeah. Um, and I feel very much that, you know, it's important to focus ourselves on what it is that we want to create on our vision Mm. and feel that feeling like that vision is, coming it's already unfolding we look for like the little tiniest signs that it's Mm. happening Mm. and like oh my gosh look you know i just got a call from someone who's interested in talking to me about coaching yeah your your negative mind might be like well that's nothing we need like 12 people to make a living doing this um but you want to just be like yay and like celebrate these little wins Mm. and you know even like i do this thing that um I, I don't know why, but it really works for me. Yeah, yeah, it's um, like when I'm driving mm-hmm. um, or, or doing any kind of activity, but, but really for some reason it works for me when I'm driving. Like I put on like really like good vibe music that makes mm-hmm. me feel really happy. And then I imagine that I'm on this road and, and I'm, it's a road that I know I'll be driving on mm-hmm. when I'm also really successful. Yeah. Wow. So I've said that to myself, like, 
right now, like I'm driving this car that, you know, I absolutely love and I'm, you know, I am, I have a thriving practice. I'm a successful and sought after writer and coach and mm -hmm. facilitator and, you know, and I just like, I like totally get like jamming with like the amazingness of that feeling. Mm -hmm. And the driving is like, I'm already, that's something I will be doing right when i'm when i'm that yeah and so it's so cool because i actually was in la recently which was where i first started doing this mm -hmm. and there's like this hill going over into the valley yeah and so i just was and i used to do that every time i go into, over that hill and so this time i was going over the hill and i was thinking like oh my gosh like so many of the things i dreamed about wow. are here in my life now yeah. you know and and to feel like oh my gosh and like to keep going you know because of course there's like way more that i'd love to create and sure. do and you know and just but it just felt like oh my gosh i actually am driving over this hill <laughs> you know like yeah, yeah. in such a different place because i hadn't wow. you know lived there for the last five six years totally. or whatever totally and um and so it just was like you know it's just so awesome you know so kind yeah. of doing things that really juice you and like get you kind of really connected to that feeling of what it is that you're really wanting and just just totally just go nuts with it and just yeah. feel just the excellence and amazingness yeah. and yeah you know and so that that has really helped me i'm sure uh -huh. i'm sure because things have come up for me that um because i had a goal i had this goal it was like ten thousand a month you mm -hmm. know as a coach like that was yeah. my goal yeah and so i hit that wow yeah and i was like whoa you know because it was you know yeah. i was like just yeah. i i would it believe me it was a hard journey right? oh, sure sure so then i was like all of a sudden i like was looking at my finances and i'm like oh my god like i made ten thousand dollars this month like yeah. as a coach yes right and it just like freaked me out you know how amazing <laughs> and then right as that was happening you know, so I'd had this level. Yeah. Then I had this feeling like I really needed to go to Peru. Right? Oh. So I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I've got some money now and I could, you know, so I took this trip mm -hmm. um, to Peru and I went mm -hmm. to the Amazon jungle and I, you know, drank ayahuasca, mm -hmm. this, you know, with yeah. indigenous shamans, this hallucinogenic wow. visionary brew. Uh -huh. And then, you know, afterward, I decided to travel to Europe. And the great thing about being a coach is, you know, you could travel and that was that was one of my big dreams so i was like wow you know i can actually afford it you know so then i was like traveling and just working on the road i was like coaching from like london in a red mail you know telephone booth and like <laughs> you know what wherever like it's just like this total adventure like the other day this client it's like was an like international spy except yeah totally you're not, you're not killing anyone because <laughs> i love that like spontaneity like i love the vibe of like I got to make this work. Like I got to put myself in a totally great vibrational place to work with this person right now. And, and like, where is that? How am I going to do that? You know? Yeah. And so I kind of have to find it. Right. And so, um, yeah, the other day I was driving from uh, LA to Vegas and uh -huh. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this call in the middle of the desert. So like I pull off. <laughs> and so the client's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm in the car <laughs> in the Mojave desert. <laughs> right. I'm ready for you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but it's like that for me personally is just, I just like the adventure aspect mm -hmm. of like working, whatever. But anyway, to go back to the thing. So I'm, so I, you know, started like the travel and all that other stuff <clears throat> and, and then had this feeling like I kept having this feeling like, wow, I really, I feel like I want to go back to the jungle. And I feel like I, um, actually what turned out is the, the, the place where I had gone in the jungle to work with this plant medicine, mm. um, needed someone like they, they had the person who was facilitating retreats left mm. oh so it was like huh and mm. um and a friend of mine i'd met there she also did facilitation and stuff and so the two of us were like geez so here i am in la i had accomplished my goal yeah i had a great pl i loved my place to live like everything was awesome then i'm traveling and you know and then I'm decide I'm going to move out of my place, put everything in storage, yeah. let go of everything. Mm -hmm. Cause I didn't know if I could keep my business down there. I really didn't know anything yeah. and go down to the Amazon and work with indigenous shamans. Right? Amazing. So it was like terrifying. I mean, I was, Oh my gosh, George, like completely 
terrified because yeah. it was like I had, you know, it's like there's this gra grasping. And I noticed this with a lot of people, like when they start to get success in their mm -hmm. businesses, yes. like it's like you don't want to give that up. You've right. worked so hard for it. It starts right. to become part of your identity. Like yes. you can't, you know, it's like, oh, I'm a successful coach or something. And you just, you know, yeah. there's a grasping. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I really felt that. And I was like, you know what? Like, I cannot stop growing. Like, I cannot stop. I cannot yeah. just stop here. Yes, yes. So I let it all go. Yep. Went to the Amazon. I worked down there for 15 months. And I was able to keep a lot of my clients. The, uh, miraculously, in the middle of the jungle, I had phone signal. So I had wow. to do a whole lot of figuring out of how to yeah, affordably... Yeah do phone calls, which I figured out. And so I was able to keep like a lot of my clients. I mean, I went down there like six years ago. Yeah. Um, and I still have a lot of those clients yeah. because they, you know, they love it. They're like, all right, what, what now? Because they feel totally. me evolving myself. Yeah. I mean, tremendous, dr dramatic, I mean, profound evolution over the past, yeah. you know, six years, I'm sure. Oh yeah. And they know it, you know, and they, every time like I'm, you know, they're like, oh, okay, you know, and th the more, what I firmly know is the more work I do on myself, yep. you know, the, the, the more I evolve myself, the more available I am for my clients. Like, to, I, then I can meet them in that space. Mm -hmm. Like I have more room, you mm -hmm. know, for them to kind of expand and, yeah. and, you know, to grow with them. And yes. so, um, you know, and we can just like break through lots of barriers and stuff that, you know, I, I know it. Like, you know, there are things I'm picking up on with my clients right now mm. that two years ago I didn't have any reference for. Right. Like, I right. couldn't help them with that because right. I didn't get that, you know? And yeah. so I just keep stretching and then they love it and they're stretching. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of just this really alive experience. Mm. And so, yeah, so I was able to keep, you know, I was still in the jungle and I was making like five grand a month. You know, I lost like a lo half of it, you right. know, eventually over time, but it was still like, that's awesome, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, um, yeah, and so that, you know, so then I just kept kind of working with that, and then I started to do my own retreats. A friend of mine and I started our own kind of retreat business. Mm -hmm. So part of my income now, you know, because then I'm actually like, you know, it's, it's a, you know, much yeah. more lucrative to do your yeah. own, own retreats. Right. So, um so anyway, yeah, so that's what bit, I do now. A little now. bit about the retreats. What kind of retreats are they? So they are, you know, shamanic Amazonian plant medicine retreats. Um, so they, you know, so I, I am there as a, a coach, like a, to offer mm -hmm. um, support for yeah. people because they're taking a specific plant called ayahuasca, which is very intense and very challenging. Some people yeah. describe it as, a year of therapy in one night. Wow. So you're, you know, you're really facing your stuff. And so it's yeah. really nice to have somebody there who can kind of just do some coaching and point yeah. you back inside yourself and, totally. you know, help you dig a bit. Mm -hmm. So that, um, I love that work. I'm really mm -hmm. passionate about it. And yeah. And so, um, and then there are the indigenous shamans and who I've, you know, over these six years become family, you know, I'm mm. like a godmother to the grandkids and, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, total, like we're just totally connected and yeah. we love each other. And so then I, you know, I love to bring people into that and help mm. bridge them to this wisdom that, mm. you know, indigenous people, I mean, they've been doing like incredible work for, for hundreds and hundreds of who knows how many yeah. years really yeah. with this Absolutely. kind of stuff. Totally. And, you know, the, the answers that so many people are seeking in like, mm. you know, prescription medications and right. all this addiction and the shopping and the eating and the, you know, trying to just focus so much on money and, mm. you know, all that stuff is really, you know, when you go to the jungle, you know, things kind of get a little more into balance yeah, where you're like right. you know no electricity right you know it's it's raw yeah, yeah. um and so people i love bringing people down into that environment because they they get like a reality check and they real remember who they are you mm -hmm. know like it's not about all that stuff you know it's it's about your being and your nature mm -hmm. and so these these indigenous shamans i mean they're amazing and they they have all kinds of plants and massage and 
you know, all kinds of remedies and things they use, but, but it's also just their hearts. You know, you go down and these little people are like hugging you and <laughs> it's just beautiful. You think, oh my gosh, what a gift, you know, that to be able to see people who are still living, the, you know, like in a very traditional way, very in alignment with the earth. And so I, I love doing that. And so basically then, you know, my clients who've been my clients, they've come down to the jungle. They've had this experience a couple, you know, they come down, you know, every year, some, some of them. And then, um, and then other people come and then they be, you know, some become clients from, mm. you know, coming on my retreat. So, yeah. so it just depends, but it's definitely been a good kind of supporter of my, my coaching practice. Cause, cause my coaching practice is my, the core of what I most love to do because mm. it's just the most freeing space um, to, to connect and to, to kind of bring in whatever, you know, inspiration. And, and um, so, mm. so yeah, so I love that, but I also really love doing these retreats and yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's really amazing. Wow. Oh my gosh. So much great stuff here. I thank you so much for, for, for sharing so openly. So I have a question for you then. Yes. Uh, I hear from people who, uh, you know, the, the go-giver idea is wonderful. And I think that a lot of the people who are drawn to listen to this podcast, watch these videos, are probably by, by nature very giving people and very generous people. But how, what, what do you say to, to people who feel like they give so much that they are losing themselves or being taken advantage of or not? paying attention to the things that are moving their life and business forward. Uh, maybe they give us so much time away. Uh, they spend, you know, friend calls. They just talk for a long time because they want to help the friend. Any, because obviously you are a generous giver and at the yeah. same time you are aware of how to move your business and life forward. <clears throat> so Yeah. I mean, you definitely got to keep your eye out for yeah. draining energies, you mm -hmm. know, like organizations, people yeah. who, you know, where there isn't kind of the cycle, you know, everything's about, about the in and the out, the breath, mm. you know, the, the sun rises and sets like, you know, there's kind okay. of, there's cycles and there's, there's giving and receiving. Yes. And so, you know, I think it's really important because I definitely have done that. I've definitely like over gave yeah. when, you know, I wasn't like experiencing like the in the moment aliveness. Mm -hmm. And so I've just kind of learned over time how to feel when I'm connected with a group or a person who actually where there is that kind of mutuality. Yes. Yes. And, um, and so I think, you know, that's, that's what I notice when people are kind of like over giving mm. is that they, um, you know, they're just kind of thinking, well, it should be, you know, if I just throw a whole lot of my energy in here, you know, right. something should come from it or, mm -hmm. you know, um, it just, it seems sometimes like, um, yeah, I mean, I think sometimes people can bump up into their own stuff about self-worth. Mm. Um, so it's, it's also like, you know, where it's, they're giving, 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 but not necessarily totally feeling like they deserve to receive. Okay. Yeah. And I really get this. <laughs> yes. Okay. Like I, you know, I have this still, you know, like I, I work on this Yeah. because, um, you know, especially the particular, I, I, I find a lot of people in myself, I have this where it was like, oh, say you're doing really spiritual work and you shouldn't really be paid really well for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that out there. Yeah. Yep. And I, I, I've really gotten over that one. It's like, actually, no, because I realized like it became very apparent to me. The more I surrendered myself into doing the work that I naturally do, like whatever weird, unique, quirky thing that I do mm -hmm. and the way that I do it, the more I've just let myself do that and, and said the hard things that I yeah. was like, Oh, can I really say this to a client or whatever? And right. just say it, you know? And then it's like, Whoa, it like opens something up. And so it's, so I've come to just trust that there's, you know, like to trust myself. Mm. And I think that, that, a lot of people are still kind of like keeping themselves really small, you know, feeling like they have to fit in the box of a coach the way that, um, 
they think a coach is supposed to be or mm -hmm. how other coaches they see are. Yeah. And so I think it's, you know, the self-worth piece is like, be yourself, like go on whatever journey you're going on. Even if the people in your life, your family are like, you're crazy or, you know, I can't tell you how many people like they, they did not get what I was doing. And finally they look at my life. They're like, oh, we don't even know how, how did you create this? You know, it's like, yeah, I created it by following my heart Yes, and doing all these things that, that most people are afraid to do. Yeah. And I'm really glad to be on the other side. I'm not like, you know, I mean, I'm working with you. You're my coach because you, you're amazing at, you know, helping me take it to a whole other level. Thank you. But like, it's, you know, I definitely feel like I'm on the other side of that doubt of like, totally. should I be doing this? And you yeah. know, where people can like, so many coaches fall out of the game because they totally, you know, they lose hope. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, you know, so there's, and, and I don't know, you know, maybe they should, maybe some of them should fall out of it because it, it's, it's daunting. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it can be challenging, you know, to totally. kind of, yeah. for any entrepreneur. Yes. Um, you know, not just coaches, but it's, you know, to, to, to claim your own business and to say, I am going to be the creator of my whole reality here. Yeah. Um, you know, it takes something. Oh, not everybody man. feels comfortable in that uh, discomfort. Yes. Um, but you know, for those who, who choose that, you know, being able to have this feeling of, and I'm worth it, you know, like mm. everybody is, nobody has to earn that. Mm. You know, we all deserve good and, and when it, and it flows more when we're being our authentic self. Yeah. <laughs> so the, you know, weirder I am and here I am doing weird hallucinogens in the Amazon. Yes. And my clients love it, you know, and they're like <laughs> business people and CEOs. They're yeah. never, that was never like who, what they thought totally. yeah. I was going to be doing when we first started working together, but they, yeah. they know me, they see me, they see how I've grown and. Yeah you know, and they, my integrity. And so, you know, it's kind of like they go, Oh, this is cool. Let's let, you know, let's go down to the jungle too. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I feel like the more we can just kind of trust ourselves, mm -hmm. feel that we deserve it and, and kind of just take those steps um, and, and take the step and, you know, stretching yourself enough, without breaking yourself, you know? Cause I think <laughs> yeah. then some people just break themselves where it's like, oh my gosh, like I have no income and right. you know, like, like yeah. let yourself have a little bit of a buffer somehow mm -hmm. yeah, to be able to keep your energy high. Totally. Totally. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such good stuff. So one last question for you and I'm going to, I'll let you go. Cause I know you, you got uh, to go places. Sausalito awaits yeah. George. <laughs> so, so question. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, oh, let me ask you two, two quick questions. And one is, who is your ideal client? Describe them a little bit to us. And then secondly is, how, where would you like people to get a hold of you? Connect okay. with you, see your material. My ideal client mm -hmm. is... Any, anything about them that you want to say is fine. Because I know okay. we're, all, we're all clarifying certain parts of... I'm, yeah. I'm clarifying right now as well, but yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, really innovators, you know, people that want to bring their gift in the world in a bigger way. Yeah. Um, but who are, you know, I just had this whole retreat, <clears throat> which was like amazing, you know, all these like software, brilliant people came down and, or, you know, just like hackers and I mean, all kinds mm -hmm. of tech people. Yeah. And, you know, and their whole thing was that they wanted to focus less. I mean, they could make money doing a bajillion things. I mean, they just could make money like any, yeah. in any way, a million ways. Yeah. But it was like, how can they actually make the world better? How can they use their gifts mm. and thrive financially yes. and make the world a better place? Right. Yep. You know, those are my people. That's my yeah. tribe. You know, you want to go deep. You want to connect back to Mother Earth. Like, yeah. get in your body and like really, really be inspired, totally. you know, to live a life that thrives not only financially, but your, your soul is dancing, you yes, know, yes. those are the kind of people and they're willing to do the work because it's not easy for your soul to dance because it's, this is an evolutionary process, you know, yes. it's, it's a contact sport, <laughs> you know, so we have to like be in, in contact with our pain and our, mm. and our, the, all the stuff that we've pushed down and blocked mm. 
And as we, we clear that and release it and feel it like there's more energy and there's more aliveness and there's more inspiration and more vision and more action. Yes. You know, that's what I love to do. And the yeah. people who are like into that, those are my people. Oh, so yeah. that's, that's, you know, the, the yeah. people. And then to find me, my site is for modern mystics.com. That's F O R modern mystics.com. Awesome. And people can go on the site. I have a free, um, it's called a shamanic journeying meditation. Yes. So they can just sign up and, and get these downloads. I have a guided journey. I have, um, you can just hear shamanic drumming and journey by yourself. Um, it's just, you know, it's a really, really amazing tool to de-stress and also mm -hmm. get inspired and get some answers for some questions you might be having about your life and, mm -hmm. you know, some confusion or Mm. shamanic journeying is is incredible so there's free free um downloads on awesome. my site for modern mystics.com sweet thank you and of course i'm i'm going to be linking that toward uh in the show notes as well and the, the video cool. description so very very cool tracy thank you so much for giving of yourself so uh generously openly and wisely this was a tremendous conversation really appreciate oh, you awesome it was so much fun george i really just appreciate you so deeply and you're just <laughs> the most amazing coach so i hope that this can help people you Absolutely. know just get inspired and and yeah. have you know yeah. some clarity about some possible directions and yeah and to work with you because you rock <laughs> thank you you too i, I feel like Thanks. when the when the client is ready the coach appears you know yes it's kind of like, so just to close off this episode, I want to remind you all that more than you can imagine, you are being taken care of mm -hmm. by powerful, powerful forces that deeply love you and are looking out for you. And that the destiny of your consciousness and soul is going towards bliss, full creativity, and loving power. So with that, mm -hmm. remember until the next episode, go and do your highest work. Take care.